shout of praise. Please be seated. In the year of 1979, I had encounters with the Lord. I said it on, on Saturday. God's servant, Pastor Iyadebe, was in Utupo then, 79, 78 and 79. A young men, we came up, but like young men, we just got influenced away again and just sl slacked down. But in the high institution in 1986, my life was going in a particular direction. And one night of the 12th of May of 1986, around 2 a.m., my heart was beating so fast. And I had some, think, a visitation. And the voice told me, if you die now, where are you going? I said, I don't know where I'm going. He said, but you can know now. Long story made short, within two hours, between 2 a.m. to 4 a.m., I rededicated my life to Christ, gave myself over to God in that 1986. It was on the campus, and I began to look for which fellowship, and then I had a brother, I have a brother, who is still a member of Deeper Life Church here today, and I remember that how he has invited us to Deeper Life several times. And then I looked forward to Deeper Life Campus Fellowship. And I went to the campus fellowship, cleaned the chairs before the others arrived, and then stood outside and began to usher people who were old members of the, of the fellowship. And they were looking at me wondering, which old usher is this? And this was my first time. I ushered them all in and then became a very fervent member of the Deeper Life Campus Fellowship. We will, we, will, we will take buses from the campus to the church in town every Sunday. I became a member of the Deeper Life Choir. I, I was involved here, involved there. And I'm saying all this to let us know that some people think that when they see a person, he just happened. No, sir. We have a history. We have a history. We didn't just happen. When you see me stand with intensity and speak on holiness and speak on righteousness and speak on character, speak on integrity, speak on consecration, speak on sanctification, there is somewhere a root from where it came. It, there's no way it can live. I tell people, I said, the challenge we have in our generation today is that many ministers just came into the gospel without the foundation of holiness, character, sanctification. They just met the prosperity gospel in the middle. And as a result of that, there is so much that is going on. And what you don't know, you can't tell another person. Where you have not been through, you cannot pass another through. And that has been my encounter. We went all the way to IBTC, Ayobo in Lagos, for campus fellowships and campus retreats, and so on and so forth. And these are formative things that built our lives and will remain with us permanently. And we are grateful. And I am glad to let you know also that I was in the deeper life Bible church choir in the Otuko church. And the pastor of that church is here now. 86, Pastor Chris of Baji, please can you come? This was my 86 pastor, Deeper Life Bible Church. He was a psychiatry nursing officer, part time, and then ministry. And full time. A word of greeting, sir. Praise the Lord! I'm the happiest to be here tonight. Because what this man of God is saying is just the truth and the truth. The foundation was very solid under the ministry of our Father and the Lord. It's a real gift to this generation. He's a man of vision. He lost 
wife too, who is also my sister, is a gift that God has given to us. I want to say what God is doing is marvelous in our eyes. And like the ambition say, the greater to come. God will take you higher. The glory of his name and be our portion in Jesus. Let your foundation be so solid and you can see how God has helped him and the wife and the family and the entire ministry. And we are seeing this as the Lord's doing. And God is going to bring millions of souls into his kingdom through this ministry in the name of Jesus. My earnest prayer is that as you come here, don't just come here to just see side. You dedicate your life to Christ. The Lord wants to use you as he's using them. And I want to assure you, this day is a remarkable day. And it's going to be a turning point that you can never forget in your life in Jesus' name. We give all the glory to the Lord. God bless. His identity is love himself. That is the word pastor is his definition. Heart for people. And we appreciate and love you, sir, in Jesus' precious name. Having said that, we want to bring our father up. That is the authenticity of the apostolic ministry. Signs, wonders, miracle, prophetic. Listen to me. The first time I heard word of knowledge, there is somebody here. There is somebody here. There is somebody here. There is somebody here. I heard it from him the first time. Signs, wonders. Crippled, paralyzed for 22 years. Dropped at the entrance of where he went to minister. Just by passing by. Next thing, the cripple rose. You are face to face with great grace. And mama, we thank you, ma. Our mama, for, who came with daddy, we thank you, ma. And Pastor Hassan, who was deeper life pastor in Abuja here. We were together in Abuja many years ago. We welcome you too. Can we give the Lord a big clap of hand as we welcome... Ah, Papa W.F. Kumui. Somebody shout, Amen. Tonight, God is going to do something in your life. Something unforgettable. Something wonderful. Something marvelous. Are you ready? Pastor Paul, an Egypt. And the wife, and their sister, and Inche. We thank God for this day. And we thank God for the vision he has given you. Thank you for revelation. After revelation, something else will follow. And tonight, as the Lord has blessed the couple, these ministers, that the Lord has raised up for this generation, and we'll see what we'll see here tonight. As my brother minister said, the best is yet to come. In school, they taught us good, better, tell me, best. We've seen the good, but we're moving on. You'll see in your life, as we're seeing in their lives, that you are going to move forward. And tonight, you need to understand there are apostles, there are prophets, there are evangelists, there are pastors, there are teachers. They are gifts to the church. And sometimes you have two or three of them 
combined in one person. Sometimes you have all the five combined in one person. What I know tonight is that the Lord is going to bless you beyond your expectation. The theme for this conference convention is tell me come hither and I'm going to start with that and then I tell you what happens after come hither and then what by your heads as we pray father Tonight, we come to you. This is a solemn moment. And I'm asking, Lord, you turn every life around tonight in Jesus' name. Reach out to every heart. Transformation tonight. Redemption tonight. Salvation tonight. Renewal tonight. Spiritual resurrection tonight in Jesus' name. Every sickness will bow. Demon powers will bow. And Lord, I pray you open the heavens for your people. Do oppression in every life tonight. Lord, we receive. And we know that you are going to confirm in every life. In Jesus' name I pray. God bless you. You can sit down. I'm looking at Revelation chapter 4. And I'm reading from verse 1. Revelation chapter 4. Reading from verse 1. After this I looked. And behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was as it were a trumpet talking with me, which said, tell me, come up hither. Which said, come up hither. A voice from heaven told John, he said, you've been there too long. Come up hither. In line with that verse. And in line with the theme that we have been following for almost a week now. I come to talk to you tonight on come hither and come up higher. Come hither and come up higher. It starts with the revelation. You can see in that verse, it says, After this I looked, and he saw what he had never seen. He said quite a lot, because this is John. John, the disciple whom Jesus loved. He's seen Jesus, you remember, from chapter 1. Here is the Lamb of God. He's seen Jesus turning water into wine. You see, Jesus Christ was the dope, the only ghost upon him. You see, Jesus speaking the word and healing coming instantaneously. You see, Jesus looking at that man that was at the pool. He's been there for 38 years. And he just said in the word, take up your bed. And that man rose up. You see Jesus, the branch of life. You see Jesus, the one that gives the water of life. And out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. You see Jesus Christ, in great wisdom, the Lord Moses said, stone this woman. What do you say? He that has no sin, let him take the first stone. You see Jesus Christ, the light of the world. You see Jesus Christ, the good shepherd, the great shepherd, and the glorious shepherd. You see, Jesus, the life and resurrection. He told Lazarus, come out of that place, come forth. And he that had been dead for four days came out. 
What I'm saying is, John was not a stranger to the Lord Jesus Christ. But now he said, after this, I looked. You know the problem with some people? If they seen one, two, three things, they stop. They seek that is the ceiling. That is the utmost. That is the highest and the greatest of what they could ever see. The Lord is calling upon you tonight. Whatever you have heard, whatever you have experienced, whatever you have received, whatever you have possessed, tonight, come up hither and come up higher. I'm talking to somebody there tonight. You are coming higher. I said you are coming higher. In life. Whatever you have got and you are saying praise the Lord, praise the Lord. I can assure you tonight by the time we are through. And by the time God begins to operate in your life. You are coming up higher. Somebody there, I said, you are coming up higher. Now, I'm going to read another verse. We're just warming up. Are you all right? I said, are you all right? You know, there are some people, they want a salmonet. You know, you know what a salmonet is? Something that is not up to a message, not up to a salmon. It's just like an introduction. They say, pastor, preacher, that's enough. Tonight, I want to tell you, a salmonate will make a Christianate, a little pygmy, a little Christian. You are going to be a giant. By the time God works with us, think about that. When God works with everybody here tonight, because I believe nobody is going to go back home the same from tonight in Jesus' name. Divine oppression. Somebody help me shout divine oppression. By the time the Lord operates on your life tonight, I will see you higher. If you are sick, you'll get well. If you are sinful, you are going to be righteous tonight. And if you are weak, let the weak say, I am strong. You are strong tonight in Jesus' name. Deuteronomy chapter 1. And I'm reading a verse of scripture to you. Here is what the Lord told the children of Israel, what the Lord is telling you tonight. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 6. The Lord our God spake unto us in Horeb, saying, Ye have dwelt long enough in this mount. We have dwelt long enough in the experiences we have. Some people say, I'm saved. I say, praise God. They come back the following month, I'm saved. I say, thank God. They come back the third month, I'm saved. I say, any other thing in the Bible? Only I'm saved. Some people come and they say, I'm healed. I say, praise the Lord. Then they come again. I am healed. I said, thank God. And then they want to come again and say, I'm healed. I said, is there any other thing in the Bible? Some people said, I got manna yesterday. Wonderful. And then they come again, I got manna yesterday. I said, that's okay. They come again, they want to say, I got, I stopped them. Any other thing in the Bible? There are so many things we have missed. Because we remain in the comfort zone. This is what I've always got. This is the way I've always prayed. This is what I've always received. God said, 
you've stayed long enough in this mount. Then he says in verse 7, turn you and take your journey and go against the Amorites. He's saying we need to have something higher, something greater. And that's why we're here tonight. I'm going to look at the word of God with you. And if you will connect with the world and connect with me, as we pray together, every challenge in your life will be removed in the mighty name of Jesus. Tonight, as I said, the message is, come up hither and go up higher. Say that with me. Come up hither. I was waiting for your voice. Come up hither and go up higher and come up higher. I'm waiting for you. Okay, you are not used to preachers, you know, wanting to hear your voice. I like to hear your voice because as you personalize it, it becomes yours. You'll be a possessor tonight. You'll be a receiver tonight. Three things I'm going to look at. I'm going to see them from the scriptures. Number one, get up. That's, that's in your hand. Get up. Look at your circumstance. And look at where you are. And see what you've got. And see the things that surround you. That you do not want in your life. And you're sitting down there. And you're saying, oh God, oh God. How about this? How about this? And God is telling you tonight, get up. You will get up. Number two, go up. When you get up, you don't just stay there. We're talking about going higher. We're talking about moving forward. You remember, the children of Israel were at the Red Sea. And they saw the sea ahead of them. And the, the Egyptian crowd, the Egyptian chariots were behind them. The mountains were on either side. What are we going to do? Moses said, stand still and see. And then he began to pray. And God told him, Moses, forget what you said now. Stand still. Tell the people, go forward. You see, many times, we want to stand still. Get up, stay there. Get up, remain there. But the Lord is telling you tonight, number one, get up. Number two, go up. Number three, grow up. Grow up. We're going to grow. We're not going to remain baby, infant Christians all our lives. This generation of the people we see tonight must produce giants in the faith. Champions in the faith. Those spies came back. They came back from the land of Canaan. And there was one thing they could tell Moses and the nation. There are giants in the land. Giants in the land. After the Lord has touched you, touched you and touched everyone everywhere we go in this nation everywhere we go in this continent the testimony will come out there are giants in the land there are giants in the land anyone going to be a champion anyone going to be a champion Anyone going to be a giant? Our testimony will be. Their observation will be. There are giants in the land. It's starting tonight. I said it's starting tonight. 
I will be a giant for Christ. I will be a giant for the kingdom. You will be in Jesus' name. Number one, get up. From revelation to restoration. You have revelation. What comes after that revelation? From revelation to restoration. Point number two. Go up from revelation to resurrection. When you have revelation, if that revelation is coming from on high, if that revelation is coming from heaven, revelation will not stand in isolation from revelation to resurrection. Point number three, grow up from revelation to realization. When you have the revelation, there must be something being revealed unto you. And that thing that is revealed, the Lord is painting a picture. The Lord is saying, Joseph, this is what you will be. That's revelation. The Lord is saying to Joshua, this is where I'm taking you. That is revelation. But you see, if that revelation stands in isolation, you remain the same, but you will grow up. I will grow up. And you move from revelation to realization. Tonight, the power of the Holy Ghost will come upon your life. And that seed you have been praying for, that seed you have been looking forward to, far away, realization has come tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Number one, get up from revelation to restoration. I'm looking at Joshua chapter 7. In Joshua chapter 7, Reading from verse 10. And the Lord said unto Joshua, unto Joshua, Get thee up. That was a problem. The Lord had given the promise. Every place the soul of your foot shall tread upon, I have given that to you. Chapter 1 verse 3. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, even so will I be with you. Be of good courage. Pursue, get to the land, divide the land to the people. And now, in chapter 6, they had a great victory. Then chapter 7 came, and 36 of them were killed. They were defeated. Their hearts melted. And so Joshua began to pray, to call upon the name of the Lord. Oh Lord, what are you going to do? What are you going to do to your name? If those Canaanites, if they discover that we're experiencing defeat now, how about the vision you showed us? How about the height you're getting, taking us to? He was praying, and God said in verse 10, Get thee up. There's a time that comes in your life. And you're wondering, why this? Why that? Why do I have such failure and such defeat? Why do I have unsolved problems in my family? Why do I have all these defeats? And the Lord said, get up. Wherefore, Christ thou unto me. Wherefore are you lying on your face? In verse 11, Israel has sinned. And they have also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them. For they have even taken of their corset thing 
and they have also taken stolen and they have dissembled also and they have put it even among their own stock that's what happened but Joshua did not know how did Joshua get to know revelation revelation the revelation came to him and said Joshua the defeat did not just come I'm always a faithful God what I said I will do I will do okay God if you are faithful if you will do what you said you will do I about the defeat we have how about this kind of yoke? How about this evil thing that came upon us? Then the revelation came. I pray revelation will come in your life. You're asking the question why? Revelation will answer the question why. You're asking why am I like this? Revelation will answer that question. Why do I not experience the promise of God? In my life, Revelation will answer that question. Why is it I'm born again? I'm a child of God. And yet, I discover this in my life. Revelation will answer that question for you. I've been expecting by now. I'll reach here. i get there. I'll have that. But, as I want to take hold, it slips away from me. Why? Revelation will answer that for you. Revelation is very important. There are many people that go through life. Many church members that go through life. Many church pastors that go through life without revelation in their lives. No revelation in their heart. No revelation in their family. No revelation in their ministry. Joshua had revelation. And God said, I'm still the same. I change not. I'm still mighty. I'm still powerful. I'm still faithful. What I said I will do, I'm still going to do. But there is sin in the camp. Get up. Deal with that. Look at verse 13. In verse 13, it says, Up. That's still telling him, Get up. Don't just lie down there. There's some people that think that prayer will solve all the problems without number one, get up. Let revelation lead you to restoration. Get up. Verse 13, sanctify the people. Set apart the people. Tomorrow, against tomorrow. For thus says the Lord, God of Israel, there is an accursed sin in the midst of thee, O Israel. And it says, Thou canst not stand. I told you before, nobody will stand before you. But now, because of sin in the camp, sin in the life, Seen in the family. Thou canst not stand before thine enemies until there's a solution. Thank God there's a solution, solution in your life tonight. Any problem, solution tonight. Any attack, solution tonight. Any disaster in your life, solution tonight. Any work of the devil there, there's a solution tonight. Any defeat, the solution tonight. But you must get up. Get up. Somebody say, I will get up. Rejoice not against me, my enemy. When I fall, I shall rise again. Tonight, I get up. I said, tonight, I get up. I said, tonight, I get up. You will rise. I said you will rise. I said you will rise. Verse 13, it says you cannot stand. 
until ye take away the accursed sin from among you. I want to remind you, Joshua did exactly that. And you are going to do exactly that. They found it out. They accursed sin in their midst. And they removed it. Any sin that God is not pleased with. Whatever he calls the accursed sin in your life. The sin, disobedience, rebellion against the word of God. Ah, but I'm a Christian. But I'm a child of God. Yes, you know. But you're also on the other side. That there are times you disobey. There are times you sin. There are times you do the forbidden thing. Sometimes private. Sometimes public. Sometimes occasional. Sometimes habitual. And then you pray and you fast. And there's no answer. And the Lord is saying, I want to answer you. You are the one delaying your miracle. Today, take off that accursed thing. And revelation will lead to restoration. Give me a good amen. They did continue in activity. You know, there are people, they cover the mess in their lives with activities. They double their activity. And God is saying, hey, that accursed thing is still there. Deal with that. Take that away. God is waiting for you. He will not wait longer. Tonight, you'll take it away. Tonight, you will confess and forsake your sin. You'll say, bye-bye, evil. Bye-bye, sin. Bye-bye, all the works of the devil. And right here tonight, a miracle will start in your life. Get up from revelation to restoration. Number two, go up from revelation to resurrection. When I talk about resurrection, there is the day of resurrection still coming. That's in the future. When the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of Man, and those in their graves will rise up. And we, which are alive in Christ, will be caught up together with them in the clouds. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. But that's another kind of resurrection. You remember? This, my son, was dead, the prodigal son. And it's alive again. That's resurrection. And there are times doctors will tell you, your nerves are dead. Those nerves, resurrection will come tonight. Sometimes somebody is blind. And then they say, the nerves in the eyes and the bloodstream. They are dead. Resurrection is coming tonight. Sometimes it's the spinal cord that will not work. I want to rise up. There's no power. There's no strength to lift me up. Hold on. Resurrection coming to you tonight. Power will come from on high. And the power of the Holy Ghost will overshadow you tonight. And that thing that is dead in you will rise in Jesus' name. I've seen God bringing life to the dead. Those who are really dead, God bringing life to them. 
Tonight, you will see it. You will feel it. You will experience it. Resurrection. Somebody shout, Resurrection. Just some few years ago, we were in Abakaliki. That's a bony stage. We were having a crusade there. And there was this young man that came. His father died in the morning in the village. But he had made up his mind. He was coming for the crusade. And the village, you know, in the village, small number of people, everybody knew. They were mourning. And then they saw the young man packing his things. They said, what's happening? Where are you going? He said, I had promised the Lord I was going to go to this crusade in Abakaliki. They said, I have but your father that died. He said, when I come back, I'll take care of that. When you go back, God would have taken care of your problem. And so he came. And you know crusade now. Crusade was not under a dome like this. It was in the open field. That night, it was raining. And I told the people, stay where you are. You will not dissolve under the rain. So they stayed. And I preached. After the preaching, I made the altar call in the rain. I said, you want to give your life to Christ? There you are. Raise up your hand. I will went through like we normally do. And it was raining. Then after that, I said, now, God is going to work a miracle in your life. And what I told them, I'm telling you tonight. God is going to work a miracle in your life. Resurrection miracle. I said resurrection miracle. And so I said, we're praying for the sick now. And we prayed. And I said, when you hear the final amen, the answer has come. We prayed. We said the final amen. We saw a lot of miracles. But the greatest miracle we saw, as we said the final amen, the father in the village rose up. Looks like you don't believe what I'm telling you. I said resurrection. The father in the village rose up. Give a shout of praise to the Lord. That's why I come to tell you tonight. Resurrection power in your life. Somebody say resurrection power in my life. Genesis chapter 20. Go up from revelation to resurrection. Genesis chapter 20. I'm reading from verse 3. It says in Genesis chapter 20. Reading from verse 3. But God came to Abimelech in a dream by night and said to him, Behold, thou art but a dead man. When God pronounces the man dead, that man is dead. God came to this man in the night, a king, Abimelech. And God said, Abimelech, you know what? You are a dead man. And then he told him why. He said, for the woman which thou hast, which thou hast taken. For she is a man's wife. What's that? Revelation. 
Abimelech did not know that. Abimelech saw Sarah. What a beautiful woman. It's not be good enough to add to all the women that he had. And he asked Abraham. And he asked Sarah. Oh, he said, we're brothers and sisters. That's my brother. That's my sister. I can take her then. No problem. And he took the woman. And he didn't know that anything had happened in the spiritual realm until the revelation came from God himself and said, Abimelech, here am I, Lord. You know what? You are a dead man because of another person's wife you have taken. But Abimelech had not come near her, all the same, a dead man. And he said, Lord, will thou slay also a righteous nation? Said he not unto me, she is my sister. You know, you can live the rest of your life on the lies of men. They lie to you. And you act on the lie. You're a dead man. They lie to you. And then you leave the path that you are treading. And start running. Why are you running? You're running on the basis of the lies somebody told you. Your life based on the lie of a man. Abimelech based his action. And the thing he did, he based it on the lie he was told. All the same. He was a dead man in the sight of God. And then it goes on. The Lord said in verse 7. Now therefore... Restore the man his wife, for he is a prophet, and he shall pray for thee, and thou shalt live. That's revelation. You couldn't have known that. That unsolvable problem you'll be carrying about, tonight a revelation will come to you. The Lord will tell you, this is why. That deadness in your business is there. That deadness in your life is there. That deadness in your progress is there. This is why it's revelation. Then he said at the end of verse 7, If thou restore her not, know thou that thou shalt surely die. Thou and all that are thine. Serious problem. But you know, the Lord gave him the way out. That's part of the revelation. See, when we talk of revelation, it's not just, I have revelation, I have revelation. If you don't do something about that revelation, nothing will change. But thank God you are here tonight. Something will change. Something must change from the very root of the problem in your life. There's going to be a shaking. Supernatural power of the Lord is going to work in your life. I was told the man rose up early in the morning, called Abraham. And did what the Lord had told him to do. You will do what the Lord is telling you to do. That is the path to miracle. That is the path to the resurrection. Because I'm trusting the Lord. You will see the hand of the Lord moving in your life. A great miracle. A great transformation. A great resurrection. Everything that is dead in your brain, in your blood system, in your nerves, 
in your body, dead at present. Nothing is moving. Nothing is kicking. Everything is just dead silent. No money. No business. No job. Certificate is there. Certificate is dead. It's not producing anything. Tonight, I proclaim resurrection in your life. Barrenness, the womb is dead. And they say, no child. Let's forget the past now. I'm talking about God to you tonight. Resurrection. Resurrection. Miracle children are coming in Jesus' name. Let me help somebody there. Some time ago, we had this woman that had a medical challenge in her reproductive system. And the doctors examined her. And they said the only thing they could do was to remove the womb. But she had no child. She said, no, I can't endure that. The doctor said, your life is at stake. They called the husband. The doctor told the husband, said, look at the problem of your wife. The only solution was then was to remove the womb. If you love your wife, you don't want to die. You don't want her to die. This is what to do very quickly. She, he said, go ahead and do it. They said, no, no, sign the paper. So he signed the paper, removed the womb. And he removed the womb. And so she knew, biologically, humanly speaking, no way to have a child. But she wanted a child, by all means, of her own. And everybody was telling her, and the husband said, I love you the way you are. I'm the one that signed the paper to remove the womb. But that did not satisfy her. And she heard that at Bagada, that's where we have the Palive headquarters. That we are praying and that we believe that the God of creation can still perform a creative work today. She said, I will go there. And so she came. And I didn't know that she was there in the natural. But as we are praying, I pointed her direction. I said, the woman there that they removed the womb, and they said, there's no possibility of having children receive your miracle child. I thought you'll say amen. And so she raised her hand and said, it's me. To cut a long story short, she became pregnant after they removed the womb. Go ahead and give a clap offering to the Lord. And she went to that same doctor and said, Doctor, doctor, guess what? I am pregnant. Test me. The doctor said, No point testing you from my knowledge, from your case history, from what we did, from what your husband signed. It can never happen. She got back home. She said, that's what he said. God is saying something different. You didn't hear that one. Whatever they have said in your life, God is saying something different. Five months after, she went back to the same doctor. 
doctor, doctor, test me. Doctor said, no point. It can never happen. What they said will never happen, will happen in your life tonight. The nice months, she went to that same doctor and she delivered life, baby, in that same hospital. When she came to give the testimony, the woman, the child, the husband, there's another person. I said there's another person. I said there's another person. Doctor followed them from the hospital to the church. After the woman gave her testimony, the doctor said, now I need to talk. Doctors, you need to talk. I said you need to talk. You will talk. And so the doctor gave the testimony and said, I didn't believe, but now I believe. Resurrection. Somebody shout, resurrection. I was uh, traveling uh, from Lagos to New York. But the plane I took had to drop us. So we can join another, tr and, uh, sorry, the plane. I had to, I had to go down and join another plane. As we're going on the tarmac, going to catch another plane. One woman ran after me. She was uh, in the plane, but she didn't see me in the plane. I said, Pastor so and so. I said, Yes. I said, I've been wanting an appointment with you. And uh, the crowd is so large, I couldn't get to you. Can you please give me a note and sign it so that when I come back to Lagos, I can show that note to the ushers and they will allow me to see you. So I said, what are you looking for appointment when you have the appointment right here? So she said, on the tarmac, while we're carrying our hand luggages, I said, the appointment is here. I said, what do you want? She said, I've been married for so long, but there's no child. Remember, we're walking. We're not closing our eyes. I said, receive your miracle child. Amen. I said, bye. I'll see you with that miracle child in one year's time. She got her appointment. You have an appointment right here. I said you have your appointment right here. That's it you have been asking for for a long time. Receive it in Jesus' name. One year after, she came to Bagada. And she saw me. And she said, Pastor, do you remember me? Oh, I said, I, I meet a lot of people. Remind me of yourself. And then she told me the story. At the tarmac, going from one plane to the other. He said, you told me. Receive your miracle child. I came to tell you, Pastor, here is a miracle child. The Lord will do it for you tonight in Jesus' name. Abimelech, the Lord told him, restore Sarah, the wife of Abraham, to the rightful husband. She woke up and she did that. You will obey God. The grace to obey will come to your life in Jesus' name. And then, in verse 17, so, Abraham prayed unto God, and God healed Abimelech. God healed Abimelech. 
is coming to you. Healing. I said it's coming to you. And his wife and his maid servants and they bear children. They bear children. They bear children. Miracles for the barren. I said miracles for the barren. Let me give you your testimony. Are you ready? I said let me give you your testimony. Represented in this couple. The husband, 51 years of age. The wife, 45 years of age. The woman had stopped mistreating. And they were fighting because there was no child. And they came to see me. They said they came for counseling. But instead of counseling, they were arguing. The two of them sat before me. And the man said, hey, when you are stopped this, how can the child come? The woman replied, all these years I've been there, what were you doing? And they were arguing. So I said, hold on, hold on, stop. So they stopped. I didn't even have the chance to say, close your eyes. I said, in Jesus' name, miracle child come. Give it to them. Give it to them. Give it to them. They were so unhappy with themselves, they didn't remember to say amen. But I said, amen. And then I said, go back home, it is done. I'm giving you your testimony. It is done. And so, they went back home. Go back home now. Sit down. You can go back home. Sit down. As they went back home, lo and behold, no argument again. Miracle happened. I said, miracle happened. As we're going back home, no more crying. Miracle has happened. No more complaint, miracle has happened. No more problem, miracle has happened. And then the mother of the husband in the religion of the other side, you understand? I said the mother of the man. In the religion on the other side, you understand that language? Heard that they were expecting a baby. Just because of that, the baby came and grandma also came to Christ. Born again, child of God, coming to Christ because of that miracle. Because of the miracle in your life tonight, somebody will come to Christ. Because of the impossibility that will be made possible tonight in your life, somebody in your life will come to Christ in Jesus' name. Number one, get up from revelation to restoration. Take away that accursed sin. Take away that sin. Repent of that sin. Turn away completely 
and say, I will not touch that sin anymore. Number two, go up. From revelation to resurrection and restore whatever it is you're holding on to, belonging to another person. Obey the Lord. Miraculous resurrection will take place in your life. Give me a dunamis, amen. Number three now. Grow up from revelation to realization. There's somebody there tonight. You will realize what you have been waiting for for such a long time. Tonight will be the night of realization in your life in Jesus' name. First Kings chapter 19 reading from verse 29 first kings chapter 19 reading from verse 29 it says and they preached that's chapter 20 i'm looking for chapter 19 Okay, Second Kings, I'm looking for Second Kings chapter 19, verse 29. There shall be a sign unto thee. Ye shall eat this year such things as grow of themselves. And in the second year, that which springeth up of the same. And in the third year, sow ye and reap, plant vineyards, and eat the fruits thereof. And the remnant that is escaped of the house of Judah shall yet again take root downwards and bear fruit upward. Take root downward and bear fruit upwards. The winds of adversity will not blow you away. Your root will go deep into the ground. Your branches will bear fruit upward in Jesus' name. Grow up. Grow up. Grow up. From revelation to realization. For out of Jerusalem shall go forth a remnant. Out of this place tonight shall go forth a remnant. And they that escape out of Mount Zion, the seal of the Lord shall do this. Therefore thus says the Lord, concerning the king of Assyria, your enemy, he shall not come into this city. Enemies shall not come into your home. Enemies shall not come into your business. Enemies shall not come into this church. This church, dynamics, will go from strength to strength. From grace to grace. From power to power. From one level of achievement to another level of achievement. The seal of the Lord will do it for every member of this church. Then he goes on to say, No shoot an arrow there. No come before it 
was shield, nor cast a bank against it. By the way that the enemy came, by the same way it shall return. I shall not come into this city, says the Lord. For I will defend this city and save it for my own sake, for my servant David's sake. Any amen? For your life, any amen? For your family, any amen? For the Dunamis family, any amen? Realization. Realization. Somebody shout realization. It came. It's coming. Here, I said it's coming. In your life, it's coming. How did it come? Verse 35. And it came to pass. Look up at me here. In my life, every promise the Lord has given, it will come to pass. Say it for yourself. In my life, say it for yourself. In my family, say it for yourself. In my business, say it for yourself. In our church, every prophecy that has come out will come to pass. Verse 35, and it came to pass that night. Which night? And it came to pass that night. I said, which night? This night that the angel of the Lord went out and smote in the camp of the Assyrians and hundred First call and 5,000. Only one angel is enough. Two angels, something terrific will happen. Five angels, devastation of the enemy camp. 185,000 enemies. They were smitten. They rose up in the morning. Behold, they were all dead corpses. Realization. I'm rejoicing with you. I said I'm rejoicing with you. You will rejoice. I know you've been dancing. You have never danced. You will dance. You will jump. Because realization is coming. I said realization is coming. Number one, get up. Number two, go up. Number three, grow up. Number one, restoration. Number two, resurrection. Number three, realization. It's in your hand. I said it's in your hand. A miracle is coming your way. The power of God is coming your way. Anointing that breaks the yoke is coming your way. Everything you have been dreaming about, everything you have been praying about is coming your way tonight in Jesus' name. But remember, that a concert scene in your private life, in your personal life, in your business life, that a concert scene, take it away. It's simply saying, Turn away from your sin and say, Lord, I cannot pretend I've done what I shouldn't have done. I repent before the Lord and I turn unto the Lord. I will not go that way anymore. Once you do that and so believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, He will forgive your sin. I was waiting for your amen. 
He will change your life. That accursed sin will be far away from you as the east is far from the west. And then the floodgates of miracles from heaven will begin to pour down upon your life. It will happen tonight. I said it will happen tonight. It's bowed and eyes closed. It's bowed and eyes closed. The Lord is waiting for you. I know you said you have been waiting for the Lord, but the Lord is waiting for you. He wants you to get up. Search your life. Look at your life. And take off. And take away. And repent of that accursed sin. What heads about? And you close your eyes. Tell the Lord right there. Confess that sin. Or confess those sins. And say, Lord, I don't want to hinder myself anymore. Tell the Lord, I'm sorry for what I've done. I'm sorry for the private sins, public sins, regular sins I commit, and the wrong ways I've been going. Lord, forgive me. On the basis of your repentance, tell the Lord. Be sincere. Don't just keep quiet. Remove that accursed thing. The Spirit of the Lord is giving you the revelation right now. Give it up. Throw it away. Lord, no more. Forgive me, Lord. Tell him. I look to Calvary. I look to Christ. Take all my sins away. If you're telling the Lord and you're sincere in your heart and you say, I am turning away. No compromise. The devil is not going to tie me down. No one is going to hold me back. I give it up. Wherever you are, in all sincerity, you raise up your hand, I'm going to pray with you. Say, Lord, I turn away from that sin. I turn away from that evil. I remove the accursed sin away from my life, from my family. I will not touch that sin anymore. Raise up that hand. And you're coming to Christ as a turn away from that evil thing. And you want a night like this to become your night of transformation. The night of redemption. The night of restoration. Every good thing you've lost in your life, you are recovering tonight. It's bowed. Eyes closed. You're raising up your hand. You're going to take a step. You come out of where you are and come right in front here. The Lord is waiting for you here. Where are you? Take your Bible, whatever you have there. You are turning away from that thing, whatever it is, from your sin. Live where you are. Come out right here. The Lord is waiting for you. God bless you. You raise up your hand from the galleries, from the ground floor. Come. Keep coming. Come. You're going to see supernatural change you never saw in your life. Come. Where are you? The Lord is waiting for you. Keep on coming. Keep on coming. From the galleries, you can come down. The Lord is waiting for you here. That sin, I repent of. That evil sin, I will not touch anymore. 
Lord, I come. Lord, I come. Lord, I come. Keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. On your way, coming. Or just allow them to come. I see some coming from the overflows. And as you come, please come with your Bibles, come with your bags, come with everything you came to church with. God bless you. Keep coming, keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. From everywhere, don't let the distance stop you. The first gallery, I see them rushing out from outside from the overflow. God bless. Give the Lord a big clap of hands. See the number of people coming from the overflows outside. Coming to give their lives to Christ inside. With hands lifted, they are jubilating and coming. Come with your Bibles. Come with your bags. And from the overflows, from the main bowl here, from the rakings under the gallery, from the first gallery, second gallery, don't let the distance stop you. Quickly, 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 quickly. This is more like a crusade ground here tonight. Keep clapping as they come. Give the Lord a praise as they come. Keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. Keep coming. What a harvest of souls tonight. Father, we thank you. Keep coming, keep, keep coming. You can, uh, Usher, you can sit forward a bit. You can, you can step up, Ushers. Yes, you can step up and let them come closer. Because the aisles are getting congested. Keep coming, keep coming. Can you see people coming from the overflows? Right in the center there, a mass. What a harvest of souls. What a harvest of souls. Give the Lord a praise, people. Give the Lord a praise, people. Are you just looking like that? This is the greatest of all miracles. The greatest of all miracles. The miracle of salvation. The miracle of new birth. They are coming in droves, in droves from outside. From outside the overflows, they are coming in droves. Coming to hand over their lives to Jesus. Keep clapping as they come, people. Keep clapping as they come. What a mighty God. I see them coming from the grace gate on my left hand side. All the way coming, 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 coming. Such a massive harvest. From the overflows, coming. Keep coming, keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. Keep coming, keep coming from the goodness gate. Keep coming, the power, the praise entrances. Keep on coming, keep coming. Mighty, 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 mighty God. People give the Lord the praise. Give the Lord the praise. This is what it is all about. This is what it is all about. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. If this was the only reason why we came here, it was justified. Justified. More than justified. Keep on coming. Anyone on the gallery who is coming, don't let the distance stop you. Quickly, quickly, quickly rush to the frontier. coming keep on coming those are the gate finally come those of you right here you can lift up your right hand where you are lift your hands everyone just all the way to the aisle to the center there and just, just begin to talk to God yourself amen raise up your hand as you come to the front raise up your hand make sure you've confessed your sins to the Lord and you promise the Lord by his grace you will not go back to them anymore. Restoration coming to your life right now. Salvation coming to you right now. I'm praying for you now, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, according to your promise, that whosoever comes to you, you will not cast out. Lord, I pray 
Receive every one of them in Jesus' name. Amen. Forgive their sin. Cleanse their hearts. Grant them your forgiveness, your redemption, your salvation. And I pray that the joy of salvation, the victory of salvation, the peace of mind will come to every one of them now. Confirm that miracle of salvation in every heart. Miracle of restoration in every heart. And of redemption in every heart. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God shout Amen. Counselors, you have, I'm sure you have the exit road, right? Where, which road are you taking? Here? All the lines. All right. So a counselor will stand in front of them and then take the lead. Please, wherever they left, they will soon be back to church after the counselors are through with them. Ensure that their seats are retained. God bless you. Hold on. One minute before they go. Just hold on one minute, counselors, for the prayer. Now, miracle time has come. My miracle time has come. Deaf ears will open. Blind eyes will open. Anything that is dead in your body will come alive. Barrenness will become something of the past. Miracle. The supernatural is coming your way right now in Jesus' name. Any kind of miracle you need, this is the time so we're going to pray after the prayer you'll do what you couldn't do before there is no doubt in my heart there's enough anointing here tonight to break every yoke revelation to bring resurrection for everyone raise up your hand for your miracle lay the other hand on yourself after the final amen, check up yourself. The miracle will be there. Father, we well, thank you tonight and bless your name. You cannot fail. You have never failed. Tonight, you will not fail anyone. Lord, in your mercy, in your love, compassion and grace open the windows of heaven upon this congregation in Jesus name every spirit of infirmity of sickness of disease come out in Jesus name Every incurable disease, I command you, be healed in Jesus' name. Anything that is dead in your body, from the top of your head to the tip of your toe, come alive in Jesus' name. Lord, let your healing virtue flow into everybody's life. And by your stripes, heal 
everyone in Jesus name let the swellings vanish out of your life cancer be healed in Jesus name HIV AIDS be healed in Jesus name venereal disease be healed in Jesus name Madness, get out in Jesus' name. Barrenness, be healed in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray a rain of miracles. Showers of miracles. To my right, to my left, in front, at the galleries, miracle everywhere. Deliverance everywhere, healing everywhere, blind eyes be open and begin to see, the deaf begin to hear, let people rise up and begin to walk, receive your miracle, receive your miracle, receive your breakthrough, receive your resurrection, Lord, let there be a realization everywhere now. I thank you because I know it is done. It is done. It is done. In Jesus' name I pray. It is done. I said it is done. Put your hands together for Jesus. Check up. You see the miracle right there. Go ahead, begin to celebrate God, everybody. Give the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords of celebration. Are you just looking like that? Give, clap your hands, all ye people. Shout unto the Lord with a voice of triumph. The counselors are going to go to the people now. If there is any among them that is healed, uh, you, 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 that one can hold up and then let us hear check your eyes if you couldn't see before your eyes are clean now you couldn't hear before check your hearing if you couldn't move before move your leg move your hands move your shoulders do what you couldn't do before very soon the front will be clear and then you come forward and let us hear what God has done for you begin to check yourself everywhere right now let the celebration start and while the celebration is on begin to check yourself ushers identify people that are healed people that are delivered people that God has touched if you're on a wheelchair stand up and check yourself and begin to walk if you are lying on a crowd on, on a stretcher attempt to rise and you notice you are already healed begin to do what you couldn't do before let's celebrate God while they do that they will never forget after I've wandered in darkness away, Jesus, my Savior, amen. Cancel. Oh, you can move Passion with the people very fast. You left the next of my heart. Shadows despairing with joy. I am telling you, made all the darkness depart. The bones came down and glory filled my soul. Yeah. 
Come forward quickly, right to the altar here. Something has happened to you, that's right. Those with testimonies can stand right from in the center here. Right in the middle here, start from here. God has opened your eyes, you can see. That's right, that's right. A miracle is happening somewhere there, right? That's right. Stand up on your feet and walk. You couldn't walk before, lift up your crutch and do what you couldn't do and walk forward here. That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Walk forward. Walk forward. Walk forward. Walk forward. Something is happening. There is commotion. A miracle here.
yourself your eyes couldn't see they are seeing now your ears couldn't hear and they are hearing now if one ear could not hear you close the good ear and begin to hear with the other ear come forward very quickly you came with a crutch or a stick that's right another one is walking right there walk forward quickly lift up your crutch walk forward quickly walk forward quickly that's right. so that God can establish the miracle. Your eyes cannot see they are seen now. Your hand cannot move, move it right now and confirm that you are healed. Your leg couldn't move, move it right now and confirm that you can move it. Your ears can hear, begin to hear now. Your eyes can see you are seeing right now. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Step forward quickly. Step what? forward quickly. God, there are already two people that God has healed of crippling condition. Check yourself and join them right now. You are healed. Let's go, let's go, let's go. What, what thing I go give to you? Judah, the rose of Sharon, a clap and a shout yeah. and a leap of joy. The Lord prays as you take your seat in the presence of God. Let us hear the testimonies. Give the Lord a praise. 
more miracles. Yes. From Cameroon. Come up here, Roslyn. She said for about, about 22 years ago, when she stepped into her grandfather's compound, she was afflicted with a leg affliction. Since then, she couldn't raise her leg. Every time she would walk with heaviness, she couldn't stand. But he said, when the man of God ministered tonight, her eyes opened, she saw four children walking out of her legs. Walking out of the legs. Yes. Now, and the, wait. they were dressed in red, red top, black. Yeah, Those were occultic kind of man, a, a, attire. Yes, and they walked out of the they leg. Walked out. walked out. Now the leg is free. And for Should... how long you couldn't move that leg? 22 years, sir. 22 yes, years. Yes. Do what you couldn't do before with the leg. Match up. Are you just looking like that? Give the leg. To hospital, she had been on painkillers. But today, after she heard you in the morning calling people to be here, she told her husband that she needs to be here. She must come here since it had defied medication, she had it had defied painkillers, so she needs to touch here. She came in, and as soon as that prayer was done, she said, I see there was cold water on her head. And for the first time in almost 10 years, there was calmness that devil Somebody checked out. give the Lord a shout out, hallelujah. Everything the devil put on your head. On, he heard a sound on that leg, bam, bam, and she started walking. And now she can walk. She couldn't walk. You couldn't walk before. Yeah. What happened? You couldn't walk. I couldn't walk. walk. I slept. I woke up. The legs swell up. Here, swell up. I couldn't walk. Everything was fading me. I cannot drive. I cannot do anything. So now, as they are talking, as the fa uh, father was saying, was praying for us. So people in my side, I was doing like this. I said, I can walk now. I can walk now. So those people say, ah, mommy, go and do me like that. Uh, how, how did you walk when you came? Show us. She's showing us how she walked when she came. How can you walk now? Show us. Everybody look up and see what the Lord has done. Somebody give the Lord a praise. Everybody look up and see what the Lord has done for me. Everybody look up and see what the Lord has done for me. Give the Lord a praise. What happened? Sir. This is Jerry. Anybody Jerry, have? come. Jerry, come. He had suffered terrible pain on the right eye for 13 years. <laughs> According to him, he said he, he, he has been unable to see bright light. He's always with this cap to shade his face from sunlight. In that condition, he came at the instance of the word, of the declaration, the pain took off, and now he can see the light clearly. Come over here. Jerry, you have had this problem for how long? For 12 to 13 years. 12 now. to 13 years. And you couldn't see the sun of light. I can't look a bright light. I, and you have to use the cap. Normally, I move around with my cap. Show us how, how do you normally wear it. No, I have to cover my, my face like this. You wear it like this to cover the, the eye. So that I can the be able light. to move around. So you can be able to move around. Yes. But now I can close my eyes and look at any And look light. straight. It's God doing something here. Give the Lord a shout of praise. How can they celebrate? 
Hakonda Jubilee, Hakonda Celebrate, Hakonda Jubilee, Hakonda Celebrate, Hakonda Celebrate, Hakonda Celebrate, Hakonda What happened? Congratulations, Jerry, in Jesus' name. Brother Ochukbe, he came all the way from Makodi. Over here. He o said, Ochukbe. Ochukbe, yes, sir. He said, 12th of April 2017, he got himself into a robbery case, and that led him to be in prison, in Makodi prison, to be precise. He said, because of the magnitude of the crime, there was no way he would be released at that point. Then while in prison, somebody visited and preached to him and gave him the seeds of destiny. While he was reading, going through the seeds of destiny, he said, in the dream of the night, God used your face and appeared to him in the dream of the night and told him, it is over, you are set free. According to him, he said, you gave him a copy of the Bible. The following day, the following day, sir, the prison warden just walked up to him and called him out and he was discharged and acquitted immediately. He came on the way to testify. Then he has been trusting God for the balance of that demonic activities in his life to be broken. Why the altar call was made, he came out. And he said, why he was answering the altar call, he saw chains broke. Chains out of his were broken, off, broken his hand. off his hand. Give the Lord a praise, people. Every chain on your life is broken. He's asking for the Bible. You give him a Bible. Yes, daddy. This is Sister Olochisa. She has suffered from peptic ulcer for solid 10 years. Accompanied with that with was heart palpitation. She told me over there that the pain was so severe, so excruciating. She couldn't stand, she couldn't do nothing. But at the instance of word declaration and ministration, she said power came upon her. Now the pain's gone. All the symptoms disappeared. And she's here to give God all the glory. Pentecostal for Solid how long? Solid 10 years. For 10 years? Yes. It's, the palpitation gone. But later the thing came back again. And today it is over. Yes. Can somebody give Jesus a big shout of hallelujah? It is over in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, this brother Joseph, sir, he grew up 25 years to discover himself in Tamara. And he said, he speaks very fast, but you cannot pick anything out of the words from the mouth. And while prayer was offered by Papa, he said he had a sharp pain at the back. And thereafter, the tongue was set loose. Now he can speak fluently. What of the pain? Pain disappeared. Come, sir. You are in Tamara before. Yes, sir. I born so myself. I used to stammer and I talk very fast. So, and now I'm over 25 years. Where the man of God was praying, I felt a sharp pain at my back three times. And since then, when, when, when Papa said that, I should, that if you have in this morning, come and testify. And, the and you are not stammering anymore. Yes, sir. So, but I was scared to come. The devil said, are you sure that you are here? I, I said, no, I know I'm, I'm here. God has perfected his healing. Oh, wow. Do you remember how it used to be? Yes, sir. I talk very fast and I will be repeating. If I, that sometimes has made me not to talk in public, I want to talk, but I will not want to talk because I will be embarrassed the way I will For talk. 25 years, can you believe the way he's talking right now? He said he didn't used to talk in the public because of embarrassment. Now he's talking very fluently. Can we give the king of kings the praise? How's this good to you? Hey, it's good to you. Organized for you by the devil. Today is the end. Daddy, this sister Oge Chuku from Lagos. She said she's 23 years old now. She has never used her right ear to hear anything. She has never heard with and the right ear. With the right ear. Total deafness. For 23 years. 23 years. She said as Papa was praying, she just noticed a pop at the right ear and she started hearing echo and after that she started hearing clearly with the right ear for the first time in 23 years. Right ear. That is this ear. Close this one very tight. 
Say Jesus. Jesus. Thank you. I am healed. I can hear. I can hear. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Can somebody give the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords a big clap and a shout of praise? Hola, hola, hola. 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 Everything that the devil has closed in your life by the anointing that opened this deaf ears, I declare they are open now. In Jesus' name. Congratulations, sister. God bless you. In Jesus' name. What happened? Sir, this is this young man is Simeon. He's 16 years old. He said at the age of three, he began to notice a certain pain on his neck. He woke up in the morning, couldn't turn the neck. He said he complained to the mother. The mother told him that the doctor told him that it was a congenital problem. That it was full of calm. He was born with it. Yes, sir. That there was a malformation of one of the bones on the neck. So he had lived with it for 13 years. He said, he, for 16 years, sorry. He said they had gone to the hospital, applied several drugs, but to no avail. He couldn't turn the neck all this while. But as soon as that prayer was done, he felt a sensation there. And then turning his neck, the neck went that way. Turning here, it went that way for the first time in 16 years. How many years? 16 years. If it was before, how was the neck like? When you try to turn it, the pain here resists the turn. And the same here. Now turn it. And let's. Somebody give the Lord a praise. It was a very short prayer. See what happened. Beloved, get ready. Because God is going to do your own. Daddy, this is Brother John. Brother John said he cannot remember for how long now, but for as long as he's known himself, he's had this excruciating pain radiating through the left side of his body. He said while he answered the altar call and responded to that prayer, before he ended the prayer, the pain disappeared. Prayer for healing had not been done then. He was just answering the altar call. By the altar call. Yes, sir. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, who forgiveth thine iniquities and healeth thy diseases. He just came out for his iniquities to be forgiven and then the disease was healed. Everyone here today with the same affliction, it is over in Jesus' name. God bless you. It is over in Jesus' name. Sir, Brother Michael had an accident in August and since then he's not been able to use that right leg to step on the ground. If he has to move, he must fly on this crutches but while the prayer was offered he feel power on the leg all eh? of a sudden the pain is gone see i cannot be able to bend my leg like this but see i can do it the pain are gone i'm free i'm free i don't want to use it again you don't want to sh show us how did you how did you come show us how you came with the crutch what, what? See, that leg was not touching the ground at all. Camera, see. That leg did not touch the ground at all. Now the leg is on the ground. He's walking with the crutch lifted. Are you just looking like that? Give the Lord the praise. God is good, oh. IT. 
mighty God we serve. Sir, this is Sister Mercy. Four weeks ago, she's into sport. Had a mishap in the course of Taekwondo training. She, she's, she's into sport. sport. She's a sport woman. Martial arts. Yes, sir. Taekwondo. So, four weeks ago, couldn't walk without this aid. And in the course of the prayer, power came upon her. Now she What happened walk. in the training? She fractured the, leg, the right leg. The, the ankle left. right there. Yes. The right or left? The left. Yes, the sir. left ankle. Yes, sir. Right there. The toes. Oh, the, the toes. Yes, sir. And you couldn't walk. Couldn't how did you come here? Show us how you came here with the crutch. You lifted the, the leg from the ground. You couldn't match the ground with it. Show us how you can walk now after the prayer. Sitting and looking like that. Take your seat. Daddy, this is a drastic miracle. Instant action unction. This is our sister, sister gift. She said sometimes last year, December precisely, she stepped on a charm. And that got this particular leg twisted in this form. It twisted to she the side. She said she came like this in this form. Now, that left her with both ears deafened. Both ears. Deafened. Charm. Twisted Twist the leg, leg. deafened the ears. Demonic impactation that also affected her bone. And her... The neck. Yes, sir. And the neck. Now, in the course of the ministration, ministrations, the both ears popped open. The twisted leg got corrected instantly. And she's here. She ran out crying to give God praise. The leg was in this form. This is incredible. Okay. Okay. Stand up on your feet. Show us how was the leg when you came. Walk gradually. Let's see. How was the leg? How was the leg when, when you came? Show it to us. Which, which position was the leg? It was twisted like this. And you had to walk like that. Like that. And show us how you can walk now. Show us how you can walk normal now. Walk there. Oh, your ma. Oh, Somebody your ma give the king the praise. And the ear is healed too. The two ears are healed. No pain. And you hear me clearly. Did it affect your hearing? That someone came with her. Is there is that that person who came with her? Blessing again, she's saying. Thank you. Thank you for healing. Hallelujah. What a miracle. What a miracle. 
What a miracle. In a short time. In a short time. Hold on. What a miracle. Twisted leg on twisted. Ear corrected. Just one chance. What a mighty God. Daddy, that, you are, daddy, you are welcome, sir. <laughs> we will see you again, sir. Here again. <laughs> Give the Lord a praise. Again. Daddy, our sister.